Hello students, welcome to ePathshala. I am Dr. Shakila speaking on applications of irradiation in food industry. Irradiation of food is a versatile technique aimed at destruction of food bone pathogens using vibrant energy waves. It makes the food safe to preserve for prolonged periods of time and thus made available to consumers at ease. In the changing scenario of world trade, switching over to radiation processing of food some th assumes great importance. Radiation will be moving fast to the status of a wonder technology to satisfy the sanitary and phytosanitary requirements of the importing countries. One of the beneficial applications of atomic energy is in preserving foods for extended periods. This is an important milestone in food preservation methodology since the successful development of canning in the 19th century. Irradiation of food is the use of ionizing radiations from active radioisotopes of cobalt or cesium or from accelerators that produce controlled amounts of beta rays or x-rays on food. However, the food does not become radioactive. Research over the past 40 years has shown that irradiation can be used to destroy insects and parasites in grains, dried beans, dried fruits and vegetables, and meat and seafood. It also inhibits sprouting in crops such as potatoes and onions. It helps to delay ripening of fresh fruits and vegetables and finally decreases the numbers of microorganisms in foods. Hence, the incidence of foodborne illnesses and disease can be decreased and the shelf life of food can be extended. Applications of irradiation in food industry. Irradiation of food is a versatile technique aimed at destruction of foodborne pathogens using vibrant energy waves. It makes the food safe to preserve for prolonged periods of time and thus made available to consumers at ease. In the changing scenario of world trade, switching over to radiation processing of food some th assumes great importance. Radiation will be moving fast to the status of a wonder technology to satisfy the sanitary and phytosanitary requirements of the importing countries. One of the beneficial applications of atomic energy is in preserving foods for extended periods. This is an important milestone in food preservation methodology since the successful development of canning in the 19th century. Irradiation of food is the use of ionizing radiations from active radioisotopes of cobalt or cesium or from accelerators that produce controlled amounts of beta rays or x-rays on food. However, the food does not become radioactive. Research over the past 40 years has shown that irradiation can be used to destroy insects and parasites in grains, dried beans, dried fruits and vegetables, and meat and seafood. It also inhibits sprouting in crops such as potatoes and onions. It helps to delay ripening of fresh fruits and vegetables and finally decreases the numbers of microorganisms in foods. Hence, the incidence of foodborne illnesses and disease can be decreased and the shelf life of food can be extended. Looking at the historical uh, events in the discovery of X-rays by W. K. Rongen in 1895 and the discovery of radioactive substances by H. Becquerel in 1896, which led to intense research of biological effects of these radiations. Initially, most of the irradiations made use of X-rays which are produced when electrons from an electronic accelerator are stopped in materials. Ionizing radiation was found to be lethal to living organisms soon after its discovery. However, no commercial development of this use occurred then due to the inability to obtain ionizing radiation in quantities needed and at costs that could be afforded. 
Having had a prolonged research timeline, now the irradiation process has been approved by the Food and Agricultural Organization FAO, the World Health Organization WHO, the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA and the Codex Alimentarius Commission. About 100 countries have approved the process for application in more than 100 food items. India first approved them in 1994. The Directorate of General Health Service under the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act has approved more than 20 commodities to be processed using this method. The first technology demonstration plant was built in January 2000 at Vashi, Navi, Mumbai for medium and high dose applications for commodities such as spices and dehydrated onions. It has a capacity of processing 30 tons of material per day. Another technology demonstration unit, Krushak, Krushi Utpadan Sankrashan Kendra, was made operational in July 2003 in the district Nashik in Maharashtra state. The plant is built mainly for processing commodities such as onion, cereals, pulses and their products and cut flowers which require low dose irradiation. The plant has a capacity of processing 10 tons of onion per day. Work on food irradiation has spread to other countries throughout the world. Because of the lack of research facilities in many third world countries, specialized agencies of the United Nations became actively involved in international food irradiation research programs. Ionizing radiations. Ionizing radiation has high energy which is enough to break the molecular bonds and ionize atoms. As a result, materials exposed to this radiation undergo modification in their physical, chemical and biological properties. At present, the principal industrial applications of this radiation include food and agricultural products for various applications such as disinfectations, shelf life extension, sprout inhibition, pest control, etc. A significant impetus was given to the radiation processing industry with the advent of nuclear reactors which have the capability to produce radioisotopes. Cobalt-60, the gamma ray emitter, is widely used as a radiation source for industrial use mainly because it is readily available from simple nuclear reactions in nuclear reactors and is non-soluble in water. In recent times, the use of electron accelerators as a radiation source and sometimes equipped with X-ray converter is increasing. Gamma processing has several advantages over other treatment methods such as products of any shape can be sterilized because powerful gamma rays penetrate right through the package and products. Being a cold process, heat sensitive plastic medical devices and pharmaceutical products can safely be sterilized. Flexibility in packaging as the products can be packed individually in sealed bags and sterilized in the fully packed form. Since sterilization is effected after final packaging, product sterility is retained indefinitely provided the package is undamaged. This is a continuous, fully automated process with a single parameter to be controlled, namely the time of exposure. Steam sterilization and ETO apart from being batch processes require more than one parameter to be controlled. The treated product can be used immediately. This is a very precise and reproducible treatment process. The commercial use of gamma radiation to sterilize healthcare products began in the late 1950s and the technology of processing products with gamma radiation is now well entrenched. With increasing experience and confidence in the technology, more applications are being invested and more facilities being built. With continuous increase in the use of radiation, 
the manufacturers and suppliers are responding by improving and modifying the existing type of irradiators as well as designing new types. Such a proliferation of designs is a boon for the potential facility operator, but it also places a responsibility on him to meticulously compare various available irradiators and make the best selection for his needs. Correct selection affects not only the ease of operation, but also yields higher efficiency and thus improved economy. Let's look how this works. When food is irradiated, it passes through an enclosed irradiation chamber where it is exposed to ionizing energy. This can be in the form of gamma rays from specific radioisotope sources or X-rays or electron beams from machine made sources. All three types of ionizing energy have the same ability to inactivate spoilage and disease causing microorganisms without causing harmful changes to the food. In all instances, food remains uncooked and free of any residue. Radiation processing of food is carried out inside an irradiation chamber shielded by 1.5 to 1.8 meter thick concrete walls. Food placed in suitable containers is sent into the irradiation chamber with the help of an automatic conveyor. This conveyor goes through a concrete wall labyrinth which prevents radiation from reaching the work area and the operator room. When the facility is not in use, the radiation source is stored under 6 meter deep water. The water shield does not allow radiation to escape into the irradiation chamber, thus permitting free access to personnel to carry out the plant maintenance. The goods in aluminum carriers or tote boxes are mechanically positioned around the source rack and are turned round their own axis so that the contents are irradiated on both the sides. Absorbed dose is checked by placing dosimeters at various positions in a tote box or carrier. The quantity of dose is measured in terms of the unit called gray abbreviated as GY. It is the unit absorbed radiation energy. One gray is equivalent to one joule per kilogram. The old unit of dose is rad. One gray is equivalent to 100 rads. Irradiation is a direct, simple and efficient one-time process. It works by disrupting the biological processes that lead to decay. Application of low doses of irradiation 0.15 kilogray can arrest the sprouting of potatoes and onions. The process consists of exposing potatoes or onions to gamma rays in a shielded room for a specified duration. Then they are brought into and taken out of the room by conveyors or carriers. As a result, storage losses of tubers and bulbs due to sprouting and their dehydration can be reduced substantially. Low dose applications that is less than 1 kilogram also lead to disinfestation of insects in stored grain, pulses and food products and the destruction of parasites in meat and meat products. A medium dose that is 1 to 10 kilogram eliminates microbes in fresh fruits, meat and poultry products. It destroys food pathogens in meat and helps in the hygienization of spices and herbs. A high dose that is above 10 kg produces shelf stable foods without resort to refrigeration and the sterilization of food for special requirements. The dose indications and the levels are given as well as examples of the foods that are irradiated. Applications uh, of radiation processing technology, it can be used for inhibition of sprouting in bulbs and tubers, disinfestation of food grains and pulses, extending the shelf life under recommended conditions of storage, ensuring microbiological safety, followed by overcoming quarantine barriers 
to international trade. The application of low doses of radiation can arrest sprouting of potatoes and onions. As a result, storage losses due to sprouting of the tubers and bulbs and their dehydration can be reduced substantially. Adoption of this new technology, especially for onions, could mean significant benefits to this country that is the largest producer of onions in the world. The development of high yielding, short duration and disease resistant varieties of potato in recent years has led to increased production and consequently problems of storage and conservation. Chemical sprout inhibitors are difficult to apply and are not always effective. Sprout inhibiting dose of radiation is also effective in destroying tuber moth which is a devastating pest of potato. Irradiation therefore offers a satisfactory solution to the storage problems of potatoes. Low dose irradiation completely kills or sterilizes the common grain pests and even the eggs that are deposited inside the grains. Moreover, only a single radiation exposure of grains is sufficient for disinfestations. This therefore is ideally suited for large scale operations thereby offering substantial economic benefits. Irradiation can also serve as an effective process for disinfestations of certain pre-packed cereal products like atta, rava and premixes. They are also effective in delaying the natural process of ripening in fruits. Thus, shelf life of mangoes can be extended by about a week and that of bananas up to two weeks. This could improve the scope for internal trade and augment export of the commercial important fruits of India. Furthermore, the gamma radiation can eliminate the seed weevil, an insect that lodges inside the stone of mango. Foot irradiation kills bacteria, insects and parasites that can cause foodborne diseases such as salmonella, trichinosis and cholera. In addition to killing bacteria, irradiation can retard spoilage and increase the shelf life of foods. The role of agriculture radiation has a major role. In agriculture, radiation helps breed new seed varieties with higher yields such as the miracle rice that has greatly expanded rice production in Asia. By the end of the 1980s, radiation has eradicated approximately 10 species of pests in wide areas preventing agricultural catastrophes. These pests included the Mediterranean fruit fly and the screw warp fly. Agricultural researchers also use radiation to develop hundreds of varieties of hardier, more disease resistant crops including peanuts, tomatoes, onions, rice, soybean and barley. Improve the nutritional value of some crops as well as improve their baking or melting qualities or reduce their cooking time. It helps in detection where illness strikes animals allowing the breeding of disease resistant livestock. Shows how plants absorb fertilizers helping researchers to learn when to apply fertilizer, how much to use so that it prevents overuse thus reducing a major source of soil and water pollution. Fumigation of spices with chemicals like methyl bromide, ethylene oxide and propylene oxide as inherent disadvantages especially retention of chemical residues. Single treatment of gamma radiation can make spices free of insect infestation and microbial contamination without the loss of flavor components. The treatment can also be used for pre-packed ground spices and curry powders. Fish, an important source of animal protein, is available in plenty all along the Indian coastline. By selective destruction of spoilage bacteria, moderate doses of radiation can extend acceptability and in turn marketability of iced fish by about two weeks. Combination processes with heat and radiation can also increase the shelf life at room temperature 
by several weeks. Besides, this is the only method of removal of pathogens from pre-packed frozen product. The technology can also be used for hygienization and sterilization of non-food items including cut flowers, pet food, cattle feed, aqua feed, Ayurvedic herbs and medicines and packaging materials. On a conclusion, let us look at the advantages and the significance of this unique practice of irradiation of foods. Poor post-harvest practices in our country, including inadequate storage and preservation facilities, as well as adverse climatic conditions, could cause heavy losses in the agricultural and marine produce. The losses could be in terms of the perishability of fruits and vegetables as well as that of the marine seafood because of improper storage practices, improper uh, preservation techniques and faults during processing. Food irradiation thereby promises to offer an effective means for minimizing these losses, particularly so because it does not affect the nutritional quality of foods. Also, irradiation increases the availability and stimulate exports, increasing the global competitiveness of our country in the market, global market. Export development authorities, commodity boards, food industry, farmers, traders and exporters of agricultural commodities can be benefited from the use of radiation processing technology. This technology could also be widely used in food research laboratories to develop simple and inexpensive techniques to extend shelf life of all kinds of fruits and vegetables apart from the usual and conventional potatoes and onions thereby leading to better post-harvest practices of fruits and vegetables. This in the long run would help the food fraternity to have better post-harvest practices, better storage holdings and an increased yield of the processed foods as well as the packaged foods.